to be seen and known, then stay uh, stay engaged with us as we run through the rest of this training. Uh, the 52 Weeks to Wealth, as many of you know, are is designed to help you double your income and double your net worth. Uh, we're going to be focusing on a principle today that is really uh, pivotal to the people who have made a large sum of money, lots of money. Uh, it is probably the differentiator. If you don't find that people are sending you business, this principle is going to shift that positioning in the marketplace. And uh, before we get started, welcome back, Alchemist. This is the 52 Weeks to Wealth. My name is Walter Moreau, the real estate mentor, and we are going through this journey on the intention of doubling your income and doubling your net worth. Show of fans, you're still committed to our mission of building 100 millionaires who are inspired to build 100 millionaires. Excellent. In that case, we'll continue forward. Uh, for those of you who are new, we are committed to doing all of our deals morally, ethically, and legally. Show of fans, if that's true for you, if you commit to only doing moral, ethical, legal deals... Excellent. That's why you get to keep the money. So you get to build and become a millionaire and stay in game with uh, your life and enjoy the passion and freedom that comes with it. Now, wealth principle number 18 last week was about building, selling your products that are high ticket and high value. Uh, show of hands, if you're a real estate investor, you have very, very high ticket items. Excellent. And then show of hands, if you are a real estate investor and you rent out units and you, so you have a high volume business as well. Excellent. Awesome. So many of you are real estate investors. All of you will be eventually. Eventually, it's the inevitable way to retire as an entrepreneur. There is no retirement plan for entrepreneurs. And so our program, our community is designed around making sure that you can retire with legacy wealth, financial freedom, and the beginning number is $10,000 passive income. Show fans, that's a good number for most people, at least in the United States, right? Absolutely. So today's uh, principle is uh, Wealth Principle 19. So this is the next principle in the series. There are 52 total principles, and these principles are designed to help you double your income, double your net worth. Obviously, Wealth Principle number one will help you get there. If you haven't taken it, go back to alchemistation.com and go in through the first principle. Uh, this number uh, 19 is be a world-class expert in your business. The first time I said this, everybody in the room was like, oh yeah, obviously. True, you you should be a world-class expert. And that, that's also, second thought is, well, I'm not the best of the best. Show of hands, you commit to being the best in your business, regardless of whether you feel like you are today. Today's principle is going to show you how to do it. We're going to walk through steps to actually make you better at what you do and give you practice actions so that you can become perceived as the best in your marketplace. Uh, if you do not already know this, I will tell you that perception in the marketplace is more important than actuality. There are people out there who are better than other people, for sure. But nobody knows about them, and so they make no money. Show of hands if that can be true. Maybe it's you. <laughs> so being the best isn't enough. You must be perceived as the best. And in order to be the world-class expert, that means the world must perceive you as the best in the business. Uh, the reason this is an important principle is because without it, people work with somebody else. People only work with people they perceive as the best deal or the best value or the best at what they do. Show of fans are committed to being the best, no matter what it takes, as long as it's moral, ethical, and legal. Excellent. Cool. All right. So we're going to have an action step later. We're going to do some mindset uh, hypnosis later. This is a tactical training. No, many of our trainings will be mindset-based and, and you know ethereal. Today is an actual tactical training with actual action steps that have to be manifested in the physical world by actually going and doing something. So if you're willing to do things that make you more successful, as long as it's moral, ethical, and legal. Perfect. Excellent. The story of uh, success for you started when you were... Uh, learning how to walk, right? It started with this concept of being able to be more mobile than anybody else in your life. You looked around, you saw adults, you saw older kids able to get to things that you wanted. You noticed that you weren't able to win the game of uh, getting that free ice cream because somebody else got to it first. Or uh, in the speaking events, you know, sometimes I'll put a book up and I'll say, hey, who wants access to this $30,000? Who wants it? And everybody puts their hand up, but nobody runs to the front of the stage. It's the person who runs to the front of the stage that ends up with whatever I'm holding in my hand at that day. And I've I've given away these, I've given away uh, books, and it's always the person who figured out that they needed to walk in that moment. So the lesson of walking came from their childhood, but what was the difference? The difference was that they knew in the moment of opportunity to just go without asking for permission, to just go and take action without needing somebody to uh, deliver the concept. Now, the reason they knew this in a new environment is because somewhere else they had seen somebody do this and win. Show offense if you ever experienced these kind of moments. Somebody else knew a context you didn't know, and just, they went bam, and it's like, well, if I'd known that I could have just run up there, I would have done it. Show offense if you're tired of those types of lessons. 
Yes. Well, they don't stop. So <laughs> we're going to go through uh, how a couple of uh, lessons today to make sure that you have this. Uh, there are three, uh, three steps to becoming the world-class expert. It is not super crazy. It is not difficult to do, but it does take actual action. It does take actually doing it. Uh, real estate investors, by the way, if you become the world-class expert in your market, you will have people throwing money at you and throwing deals at you. A perfect example of this is when I was investing in Fall River. I was a realtor in the city and I was also a influencer in the city. So I would go around and create content about the city, letting everybody know what market was best, what investment zip code was best, why this type of property I would never invest in, or why this was my favorite type of property, why this is my favorite street to invest in. I would talk about the train that was coming. I would give them information about the way the city was going to be shifting their funding to different levels in, in certain cities and certain streets. And then I started investing in those streets in advance. There was a point where they monetized, they gave extra benefits and bonuses for people who invested on East Main Street. I then bought a 10 unit on East Main Street. So when they came in and they replaced all of my gas meters, they re repaved the entire street. It lengthened and si increased the size of my sidewalks. When they came in and they they re-insulated parts of my building because my tenants were in that building. It was part of an area that they were willing to spend money on. When they helped me uh, put new signing in front of the building for my tenants, that was all because... I knew that the city was providing value. And I would share that. I would tell those stories. And now that made me more perceived. Now, what happened was people in Boston, an hour away, sent me clients, realtors, my competitors, right? Sent me clients who wanted to invest in Fall River because they knew me as the specialist in Fall River. I was a world-class expert in my little market of how to do what I do. Show of hands, if you could use that kind of business, other people in your, your competitors send you business, wouldn't that be wonderful? We're going to talk about how to do that today. Uh, my brother, he owns a fitness facility. In fact, Billy Reuter is on the call. He owned five at his peak. He owned five gyms. And my brother owns a fitness facility that pulls in over a quarter million a year. It's close to $300,000 a year this building brings in. And one of the things that he learned that separates him from his competitor, by the way, his competitor built his business at the same exact time. Same exact time. He built the same exact type of business. My brother went after a very specific type of audience. And this other gentleman went after a different type of audience. My brother's business charges $200 a month for membership. This other competitor's business charges $50 a month for membership. My brother earns more money and he owns the real estate in the building that he's in, which has uh, $18,000 of tenants paying him every single month. The competitor leases a space. So not only does my brother have a stronger business model, with more clients that are very, very dedicated. He also has a rent-free building that pays him in addition to the money his company is already pulling in. And yes, he's got two different companies. One is the real estate company that pulls in almost $200,000 a year. And the other one is the, the business itself, the gym. So if you understand, a world-class expert does things different. Yes. So when it comes down to income and tax time, my brother's assets are significantly higher and assets don't get taxed. They can't tax you for things that you own, uh, except for the city. The city will tax you for things that you own. So there's three three steps that you can do. Uh, show fans, if you're committed now, you, you understand the reason this makes sense. And by the way, my brother became a millionaire. He became a millionaire through his real estate and his business combination. He bought the property that he owns today, this big commercial 40,000 square foot property where his facility is in, his uh, children's education facility that teaches them fitness. Uh, he's very clear with me that it's not, I'm not a gym, bro. I am an educational facility that teaches children discipline and skills that they can use in their business careers going forward. And so he's, again, positioned himself as a world-class expert by writing a book about empowering children. And if you were at the summit, he gave away, I think, 20 or 30 of his books. And this book on empowering children is also what drives his business that is designed to empower children. Show fans, if you understand, he's really positioned himself as a world-class expert by writing the book. He's the authority on empowering children. We're going to go through three steps that you can do today. And these three steps, uh, you're already implementing one of them. The first one is continuous learning. Uh, we're going to talk about the book of the week. I believe, I don't know if Mike Shine is on today. So Mitch Jorsky, you've read the book Outliers, correct? All right, so you'll, you'll do the book of the week for me. Cool, awesome. Continuous learning. Step one of the three steps to becoming a world-class expert is being on top of the industry at all times, being ahead of the curve, paying attention to what things are, are going on. Darina just recently went out to a fund of funds 
event. She went out to Miami. She drove her pregnant little Russian princess butt all the way down to Miami, five-hour drive, and she spent the weekend there learning with some of the top syndicators, top attorneys, top fund managers in the country, learning how to do the new systems of funding, how to make sure that capital comes in legally, morally, ethically, how to make sure you're attracting capital in the right way. You don't want the wrong investors. You want high-quality investors. And she's learning how the rates operate now. When you take on a property in commercial, it's a little different from when you take on a property in residential. And Darina is getting a lot of that knowledge. By the way, would it be valuable if Darina put a presentation together and taught it in the next couple of weeks? Would you be interested in something like that? Because, I mean, it's if I don't get all the hands, I probably won't do it. I won't you know, push her at all the hands. All right, Darina, that's pressure. Let's give Darina a big round of applause. I think that your peer pressure will make sure that she does it. Uh, if you're on Facebook right now, drop in the comments. Yes, Darina, please create that training. We want to know what you know. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I learn a lot from Darina. She goes, I send her out to learn things. She comes back with bite-sized nuggets that I can use, like useful information, just the best of the best. She knows what my goals are, which is to buy a lot of multifamily real estate. Uh, so awesome. Thank you. So continuous learning. Continuous learning, always be learning, always be consuming. That's why every week we talk about the book of the week. We give you this principle, just one principle to acquire so you can master the principle and leverage the, the book so you can get to the next level. So one, stay ahead of industry trends. So legal components, you know, things that are changing, things that people are doing. By the way, the rate, the federal rate is not what interest rates we're paying on the commercial side. Interest rates in commercial can be three or four points heavier, higher than the federal rate. So even though the federal rate is something, it's important to know the industry standards and trends. Next is best practices. Right now in this market, you hear a lot about sub two, right? Sub two. <laughs> and I did take a picture with Pace Morby. I got to meet him and hang out with him the other day. So I'm about sub two. I've done one sub two deal out of the over 100 transactions that me and Ron have bought together, over 100 doors together. It's a hundred and something more, a lot more doors that we've bought. And we've only done one sub two deal ever. So even though sub two is becoming popular, it's still not the best or only way to buy property. So it's important to understand the other best practices. Right now, we're doing a lot more seller financing than we are doing sub two. We're doing a lot more assumptions of mortgages, which is similar to sub two, but we're doing wraparounds and we're doing a, a seller financing and we're doing a traditional Traditional borrowing, the same way we have always done in the commercial space. And we're also allowing uh, private money investors and syndication models to come into our investment career. So understanding best practices. Um, number three, emerging technologies. You know, for continuous learning, can you find faster, easier ways to do what we do? So right now we're using Zoom to communicate and train instead of the old school way of let's all get together in a hotel and let's all you know cram each other against the chairs, which don't worry, we will do that in Orlando. We'll all get to meet in person again when we get to the summit. But this technology of Buildium, like these app, app folio, these online training software, not training, but property management software that allows us to go and look at reports. In fact, yesterday I was looking at reports and a deal we have that's uh, 35 units in Decatur. We've owned it now for almost six months. I just went, I was talking to the property manager, like, I don't understand why we're paying so much for this work, right? What the heck? Why does, you know, clean out and, you know, paint cost $5,000 for a unit? And he said, he was very offended. He was like, hey, I put everything inside Bill Diem. You know, go look at it. So when I went and looked at it, I got to see the line item, the itemized lines of every single thing that they were doing. And they were doing way more than cleaning out and painting. They were doing the flooring. They were changing doors. They were replacing windows. They were replacing sinks and disposals. And all these little things were detailed inside the software. And so I had to you know, come back with my tail between my legs and apologize. Say, hey, you guys are actually getting really good prices. Thank you very much. This is actually and a great you know, job. So my return on investment is, is huge, tremendous. Technology allows that. Uh, Alchemist Connect, another great technology. When people check into our events, we automatically send them free stuff. Before, I would have to manually go in and like take their business card and then send them a text like and be like, hey, by the way, here's the free link. Now, as soon as a person checks into our events, we automatically send the three steps to becoming a millionaire. Show fans if that's valuable. Technology, right? It allows us to be more helpful. So there's a lot of different um, emerging technologies that you can use. AI. I leverage AI often in order to think of new topics and new structures and new systems that we can put into our company. We go to AI and we leverage it all the time. Show fans if you're doing that, you're using a lot of AI in your days. Awesome. Excellent. Cool. So continuous learning, stay on top of it, stay on top of knowledge. Uh, the more your knowledge base increases in your space, the more likely you are to be able to capitalize on things. Number two, thought leadership, thought leadership. And this is where writing a book 
can become extremely valuable. It can position you in the marketplace, slightly adjust the way you're perceived. Thought leadership is something that can be created by simply having the right knowledge in a direction and being able to see and foretell the future just a little bit. You don't have to be able to see or tell the whole future, but if you've ever been on at the Hunter Millionaire Summit, I do my prediction for real estate every year. Show fans you've been to the Hunter Millionaire Summit. And each year that prediction comes from a prediction I wrote in 2020. And I have not changed a single thing on that PowerPoint for the last four years. It stays exactly the same. The only thing I adjust is the updated current where the market prices are. That's the only slide I update so that you can see where the market price is today. So that way we can see if it's following my trend of what I predicted in 2020. Show of hands, if that makes me a thought leader, if every year it's accurate, if every year it's about right. <laughs> so thought leadership doesn't come from making crazy predictions though. It comes from having understanding. If you read or listen to watch my, uh, my prediction at the summit, what I do is I talk about the factors. I talk about the factors we're paying attention to. If they do this, this will happen. If they do this, this will happen. I'm not saying this is where prices will go. I'm saying this. these are the causes that will create things to take those types of actions. I'm giving information so a person can make their own gauge, their own judgment. That's what thought leadership is. Show fans, if you'd like to position yourself as a thought leader, you don't have to write a book to do it. You can simply position yourself as a speaker. You can go and speak at events. You can also position yourself as a leader within a community, run an event. In fact, Cliff just agreed to run Brockton, Massachusetts. So that's a, a what? Let's give Cliff a big round of applause. Thank you, Cliff. Now you're a thought leader in Brockton. And uh, you know, Ken Ingram is a sponsor inside of uh, the Tampa Bay team. So he teaches people how mortgages work, became a thought leader through being a sponsor. There are ways to position yourself as a thought leader that don't involve writing a book. And I do strongly suggest, by the way, write a book. I've written three that position me as a thought leader in certain uh, arenas. As a thought leader and authority in your field, you share valuable insights. So write this down if you're, if you're taking notes. Valuable insights, you can share expertise and share original content or original ideas. Uh, you can also, your ideas don't have to be perfectly original. I talk about ROE often. Show fans, if you already know what ROE is just by me saying the words, the letters. Awesome. Very smart, smart group of people. For those of you who are new to Alchemist Nation, ROE is the equation we use to become a millionaire. It is the return on equity equation. I see your hand. I got you, Scott. No worries. Return on equity. Equity is what's inside your property when you have an asset that is worth more than the debt. The gap in between is your equity. So a $900,000 property that you only owe $400,000, your equity, your, R, your equity would be $500,000. If you are earning $10,000, uh, $5,000 a year on that, your ROE would be 1%. If you're earning $10,000 a year on that, your ROE would be 2%. So an ROE of about 10% is really, really good. But most investors, as you own a property for a longer period of time, your equity goes up and your rents stay about the same or the profit stays about the same. So your ROE actually squeezes and compresses over time. So it's really important that we look and review how much equity is in that property. For example, if that property now had a million dollars of equity and it was only pulling in five or $10,000 a year, well, even at half a million dollars, it's pulling 5,000 a year. That's a 1% return on equity. Not great. But when the property only had 50,000 in equity in it and it was pulling 5,000, that was a 10% ROE. Show of hands if that makes sense. Excellent. So as the equity went up, as it went to 100,000, now it was only getting a 5% ROE and it progressively got worse. The ROE gets worse and worse. So we sell that building. We 1031 exchange it into a larger building with more equity capacity and more cash flow capacity. And that allows us, it's called pyramiding. We use ROE to pyramid real estate. Man, I just went way too complex. I'm going to pull back. That right there, what I just did is called thought leadership. Show of hands if you got an example. <laughs> When the idea is complex, unique, and different, all I did was pull ROE from the investment space. I pulled it from the business space. Real estate investors don't talk about it, so I became a thought leader simply by taking something from the business space and looking at real estate like a business instead of real estate as an investment. Show fans if you understand that real estate is a business. It is not truly an investment. The only way real estate is an investment is when you passively invest as an LP or in a REIT or as a debt instrument, as a lender. Anything else, real estate is an active business. Show of fans, if you're a landlord, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you've done flips, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's an active business, very cool. So if we take business principles into the real estate space, we now become thought leaders. 
Awesome. Uh, things you can do once you are a thought leader. You can get on blogging channels. You can blog. You can get on podcasts. You can public speak, and you can do media appearances. One of the, the coolest things that we do in Alchemist Nation is we go and we clean up beaches, or we clean up community neighborhoods, or we clean up parks, or we go and we clean up uh, an old person's yard in our landlord associations, brand new property owners associations. We go and we'll clean up an older person's yard in our area to help support the community, make the community look better, but also help that older person. That also gets us media attention from the news, which makes us thought leaders. Show fans, if you understand, you can position yourself tomorrow as a world-class expert in what you do in your community, in your business. Awesome. So that's number two, thought leadership. Uh, number three, innovation and differentiation. Uh, continuously innovating and doing uh, things differently, differentiating your products, your services, your offerings to address evolving market needs and surprising and surpassing the customer experience, increasing the customer, delighting the customer experience. By the way, show fans, if you know your customers should be delighted. Who here loves it when you're delighted as a customer and as a client? It's like, oh, this is way more than I expected. Like, who knows that you talk about it when people over deliver? Who here goes and tells everybody, like, damn, like I just got away with this shit. Like, you wouldn't believe what they gave me. This is insane. This is ridiculous value. This coaching program that you're getting for free right now used to be a ten thousand dollar coaching program. We used to call it uh, the mastery program. We brought a whole bunch of people through, and we still have our mastery program. It's a little more advanced and we charge the 10,000 by the way show fans if you're in mastery and you know it's a little more advanced what we're doing here it's next level but I've been told that program is worth 25,000 and 35,000 in fact show fans if you paid more than 25,000 for a coaching program before yes there's a few of you let's give you a round of applause you heroes you warriors uh, when you come into a program like this you see the actual value of what can be done the reason our programs are so affordable and still delivering a tremendous amount of value is we aim to be world-class experts in our business. We increase the amount of value by building systems. Ron and I have invested over $1.2 million into Alchemist Nation to build great systems. And we've hired and trained and brought in great leaders so that you can get these things at a better deal. Show fans if you're glad that the leaders are doing what they do so you can have tremendous value. Awesome. Then let's give all of our leaders a big round of applause. The ones who are coaching, mentoring, guiding, building teams, building millionaires in each one of their cities. You got to innovate and stay different. There are ways you can innovate and be different from everybody else in your space. Realtors have it the worst. Man, there are more realtors now than there ever have been in the history of real estate agency, in the history of real estate on the planet. There are more realtors licensed now than there ever have been in the history of our time everybody's getting their real estate license. Me and Thurwood went to the gym this morning and I just happened to drop that we're in real estate. She's like, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I do real estate. Thurwood's read 350 books. I've read 450 books on business and real estate. And when I said that, she said, I'm getting my real estate license. And I was like, oh, fuck, we must be coming to an end. <laughs> business must, the cycle must be coming to an end. <laughs> and it is, it is true that real estate agents still crush it. My, many of my agents are still making six figures, multiple six figures. And the reason is they know how to differentiate themselves from everybody else. I'm going to give you a couple of tips. If you know an agent, please give them these tips. It's really important that they understand this. One, do not work everywhere. Focus on a city. Pick a city. Two, do not work every niche within the city. Pick a type of property. The reason I crushed it in Fall River and I continue to crush it is because I said I only do Fall River. And I only do multifamily. I will not touch anything smaller than two units. And I will not stop. I'll buy as much as you need. And I will help you find all the money that it takes to become successful. So if you buy a deal and you're like, I don't have any more money to buy the next deal, don't worry. I know creative financing. I can out negotiate any deal to make sure that you can finance it. So if you understand, that's how I build millionaires. It's, I'm an unstoppable force for good, right? So you as realtors, if you can do what I do, if you can learn creative financing, if you can learn how to find off-market properties then you too can earn an infinite amount of money as long as you just keep helping your investors get to that next level. Show fans if you could do the same things in your market. Of course you could, absolutely. So innovate, be different. Leverage technology, leverage knowledge, leverage relationships. What makes Alchemist Nation different from all the other coaching programs? It's not a company run by one coach. 
I have coaches in every single market. And each one of my coaches has backup coaches. Each one of my coaches has a realtor. Each one of my coaches has a mortgage broker, has an attorney, has a financial planner. They have their own trusted teams to help build millionaires. Show fans, if you understand, that makes us different. Our system is unbreakable because we have a team that cares about you. I absolutely love it. So innovate and be different. Number three, write it down, innovate and be different. Now we're going to walk through a very quick action step. I'm going to ask you to write down one thing for each of these three. And then we're going to go into a mindset training that Doug has established. And we're going to do the book of the week. So stick around to the very end to find out what next week's wealth principle is. And we'll do a Q&A session at the end. Darina, if I said, let's go into a breakout room where we network and connect with everybody, could you queue up a breakout room that would make sense to do that? It can't be a webinar. It has to be breakout room status. Is that possible? She's going to do some research for us. Yes? No? No, because we set up as a webinar, so I don't... We're going to have to drop a new link and go into that new link. Is that possible? Right. Yes. Okay. So can you get us that link queued up? Yes. Awesome. Let's give Doreen a big round of applause. Wonderful. Number one, I want you to pull out a piece of paper. I want you to type or write whatever you're doing. If you're texting yourself, that's fine too. But pull out a piece of paper. One, what can you do this week for continuous learning? What can you do this year... What is the one thing that you can do this year to help you increase your continuous learning? What's a process or a product or a service or a book or a, a component or a podcast? If it is the 52 Weeks to Wealth, that's okay to write that down too. What can you do? The one thing you can do that you would guarantee that you stay in a continuous learning mindset. What is something you could do that would guarantee you stay in a continuous mining learn set? Write one thing down. And yes, if you write the 52 Weeks to Wealth, I guarantee you your success. So strong suggestion there. So write one thing down. Number two, what is one thing you can do this year that will create thought leadership? What is one thing you can do that is applicable that you can do right now, this week, this year, that will allow you to become a thought leader in your space? Some of those examples might be podcasting, public speaking, sponsoring, uh, hosting, uh, writing a book, writing a blog, uh, Posting content every day, creating content around a topic. What's one thing, don't write two, just one thing you can do this year that you'll master so they can position you as a thought leader. Just write that one down. A few of you are being crazy and you're writing two. Don't do that. That's not what I suggested. <laughs> a lot easier if you do one thing, just master one thing. So write it down. What's one thing you can do this year to become a thought leader, to level up your thought leadership in your market and the people who want to invest with you? I'll put the suggestion to sponsor events in Alchemist Station because that helps me build millionaires and it helps you raise capital and helps you build millionaires. I'll put the suggestion to host our events. If you don't have money, host our events, help us volunteer at our events. And if you do have money, you want to make a lot of money, sponsor our events. And if you are uh, really looking to level up, create content, right? If you you don't feel you're at the level where you can be present in and at the front or doing these bigger things, then create content and start sharing what you do now. Level yourself up somehow. Become a thought leader in something. Number three. By the way, only pick one. Just just pick one. Number three, action step for this week. What can you do to be different? What can you do in your space that would make you more in innovative? What I did in my space was I niched down. Right? My suggestion is niching down in many cases. For some of you, it may be implementing AI into your business. For some of you, it may be uh, talking, just shifting what you talk about that's different from everybody else. Like if you know Ken Ingram is a, a mortgage broker, so everybody's talking about interest rates. If Ken was able to shift and start talking about something unique that investors really want to know, like how to buy more than one house as a real estate investor, how to how to leverage you know three loans, how to buy three houses in a single year would make him a different mortgage broker and be able to give a different strategy to people. Show fans if we grasp how innovation and differentiation can. So write one down. What's one thing you can do that differentiates you? Jake Ingram, he's a, a bodybuilder, right? It helps people train personally. So if he were to say, I will get you the body you want, instead of saying, hey, I'll help you lose weight like everybody else, right? I'll get you the Instagram body. Right, I'll get that Instagram body for you. Let's let's go. That makes his program worth more because Instagram body means you got to do a lot more work. And it comes with a net nutrition plan. It's a five thousand dollar program. It's a full year commitment. You and I in the gym, you know, three times a week, and you got to follow my plan. This is how it works. That innovates. It makes him different. So, fans, for catching how you can innovate and be different. Awesome. So, write it down. Right, one thing, one thing that you can do that'll make you 
in innovator and differentiate you in your space. Awesome. So we're going to go to the book of the week after we do our guided meditation. If you are driving, please make sure that you keep your eyes on the road and do not close your eyes if Doug suggests closing your eyes, but you are allowed to take deep breaths in if you suggest taking deep breaths in. If you're here in the 52 weeks for the first time and you're like, what the heck are these guys doing? This is very scary. This financial planning thing, this wealth building thing. Uh, the pro tip for this is just buy real estate and don't buy bad real estate. If you have not learned how to evaluate deals, you haven't earned the right to be in real estate, go and learn how to evaluate deals. Go to alchemistnation.com. Take the first step. Walk through the Millionaire Path Report. It takes about 30 seconds to go through it. You'll get a free report. The second step is join us here. You're already doing that. And the third step is meet your local mentors. Go to a local event. Learn how to invest in real estate before going out and investing in real estate. Get as much knowledge as you possibly can. Please don't make mistakes in this market. It is harder to invest in real estate now than ever has been because there's more competition now than there ever has been. So we have to be much better than we ever have been. That being said, it's still the number one way to build wealth. So go to alchemization.com, get all the free resources and stay with us. And if you're afraid to be hypnotized to be successful, then now is the time to log off. Uh, Doug McGurk. They're all yours. Doug, by the way, trained with Tony Robbins. He toured with Tony for three years. He taught Tony Robbins clients how to level up their success, how to maximize their results. He used training of the mind, training of speech and language to increase the person's sales results. So if you'd like to increase your sales results. Awesome. Awesome. There may be a training on Wednesday that Darina may be dropping for us to help us learn how to work with investors and increase the likelihood that an investor will either invest money with you or say yes to purchase or buy or sell to you. Show of hands if that would be valuable for everybody in this room. That will be free then. And during that webinar, I will give away secrets that have helped me build millionaires out of real estate agents, attorneys, lenders, mortgage brokers, financial planners, and investors. Show of hands if you're okay if I give away secrets. Yes. Cool. All right. In that case, Darina, when you get a chance, we'll drop the link for that. And for everybody who's still with us. Wow, you're all crazy. All right, Doug, hypnotize us towards success. We want to be world-class experts in our business. Let's give Doug McGurk the maximizer. Big round of applause. All right. Well, come on. Let's give Walter some love. So if you don't already realize like how blessed you are to be on this call, because um, Walter's and, and everyone in on the team here is giving it all away. Uh, I, I don't know if you realize how valuable the information and the resources that are here that are you just come here on Saturday for that. And everyone on this call, if you're not, by the way, pro tip, if you're not like messaging people in here and kind of going, hey, let's have a chat, like love to learn more about what you're doing. Uh, let's get on a call. You're crazy. Because the resources in this in this Zoom room are like next level. So what happened to very nice, Eric? But do I usually say very nice? Oh, wow, I didn't even realize that. Very nice. So, <laughs> so as you all are gonna get ready to allow your other than conscious mind, also as part of your innovation may be your strategy by reaching out to some people on this call. Something to think about. Let me make sure I'm sharing my audio. All right. So please let me know if you're hearing the sounds. All right. All right. So why don't you go ahead and take a nice, big, deep cleansing breath in and relax. It seems awfully loud. Is the music too loud? There you go. And go ahead, take another big, deep cleansing breath in. Roll your eyes up to the back of your head till you feel a little strain. And relax. That's right. Now, with your eyes closed, I wonder if you can Settle even more comfortably right now, wherever you're sitting. And take a moment to focus on your breath. Allowing each inhale you draw to bring in calmness. And every exhale 
to release any tension. And with every breath you take, you journey deeper into a state of relaxation, preparing your mind to embrace new insights, new transformation, new innovation. So imagine, if you will, a vast and serene ocean its surface reflecting the sky above, mirroring your journey towards becoming a world-class expert. Each wave that rolls to the shore resonates with your deepening relaxation, carrying you closer to your innermost aspirations. As you gaze upon this vast expanse, you realize that the ocean's depth and richness mirror the potential within you, waiting to be unlocked. Now, envision yourself as a master artisan in your field, crafting your legacy like the precision of a skilled sculptor. And every real estate investor, professional business owner looks at their work as art. And every decision you make, each action you take is like a chisel strike, shaping the masterpiece that is your career, your adventure. And just as an artisan selects the finest materials, you choose experiences that refine your skills and deepen your expertise. Embrace the journey of mastery, for it is a path paved with endless learning and discovery. Allow yourself to be driven by passion for excellence letting this fervor guide your every move. Be curious, delve deeper, and immerse yourself in the nuances of your craft. Imagine yourself standing at the edge of a vast forest, representing your journey towards expertise. Each tree symbolizes knowledge, each path a different aspect of your industry. And as you step forward, feel the ground beneath you, supporting your journey of continuous learning and growth. Consider the trees, how they reach upwards, ever growing, always seeking the light. You too are like these trees reaching for the sunlight of knowledge. And with each step forward, you absorb new information, new techniques, new perspectives, fueling your growth and strengthening your roots in your field. Observe the patterns in the forest, the natural order and harmony. Just as nature follows successful patterns to thrive, so can you identify and follow the best practices in your industry. Understand that works, replicate success, and integrate these methods into your daily routine, refining them to suit your unique style and goals. So as you connect even more to your higher power, to God, repeat these affirmations and affirmations aloud or quietly to yourself. I am committed to achieving excellence in my business. Why is it each day I find new ways to enhance my expertise and offer unparalleled value? I am a beacon of innovation and leadership in my field. 
How does it feel to know that my work inspires others and sets new standards of excellence? Why am I so adept at integrating new tools and innovations into my work? Now, picture yourself a year from now, having embraced every lesson and opportunity for growth. See how your dedication has elevated your status, making you a revered figure in your industry. Your peers look to you for guidance and your clients celebrate the transformational impact of your work. Envision the accolades and respect that come with being a top expert, feeling the pride and fulfillment that accompany your achievements. Know that each step you take builds upon the last, creating a legacy of excellence and influence. And as we begin to conclude this session, carry forward the deep understanding that you have the power to shape your destiny. Let the insights and affirmations from today resonate within you guiding your actions and decisions. When you next engage in your work, you'll find yourself more focused, creative, and driven, embodying the essence of a world-class expert. Your contributions will not only advance your career, but also enrich your industry and inspire those around you. And in the days ahead, your dedication to learning, adherence to best practices and mastering emerging technologies and innovation will become second nature. You'll recognize opportunities for growth and you'll seize them, allowing moving closer to your goal even more of your reality of being a world-class expert. Now, as you gradually return to your full awareness, bring back this sense of purpose and clarity, ready to excel and make a meaningful impact. And as you open your eyes, feeling even more refreshed, invigorated, and ready to embrace the challenges and opportunities that await you. As you come back, let's give Doug a big round of applause for giving us a very cool look at what the future might be as we develop into world-class experts. What Doug does every week is something he has charged thousands of dollars for. He does it for this community. He's been on this mission with us for the last five years, season five of Alchemist Nation's 52 Weeks to Well. So let's give Doug one more big round of applause for all the work he's done building millionaires networking with millionaires by the way he has one of the greatest networks of millionaires and billionaires that i know to date that we have access to so very important that when we're speaking with doug and leveraging what's in his mind we understand what he's actually done and who his friends actually are and the fact that he's here with you means that he really believes in your success and what you're doing here so stay focused and uh thankful and abundant for for the amount of time that he puts in with this community it's absolutely amazing i'm, I'm very thankful for it now each of you might have had something that came up for you while you were thinking while you were listening while you're meditating while you're in that that guided meditation uh that trance now is a good time to write it down subconscious mind when we have great moments of clarity and great moments of focus sometimes tells us this little lie that oh don't worry that was so important i'll remember it and then it goes and forgets it so you won't change because the subconscious mind's job is to keep you right where you are already so if you had a great thought or a great idea now's the time to write it down this is yours you don't have to share it with us this is just for you and it's for your continued growth and development if you're again thinking oh that that idea is so powerful i'll never forget it I've been there too, and I've been wrong. So I just want you to, if it was, you had something that came to you, please write it down. Save it for later. 
write it on a separate page, put it in a separate notebook. Anytime you have a moment of clarity, write those things down because those are the moments that will change your life when you implement them in your life. Awesome. So every week, this principle, each principle has a book that is associated with it. If you're one of those people who's with us who decided to read 100, uh, two, <laughs> 52 books a year, one book a week, then your suggestion might be to read this book this week with us. Now, the reason we read a book a week is because the average CEO reads 50 to 60 books a year. Show of hands if you know they make a lot of money. The average CEO gets paid the most in the company. So what we want to do is get you to that point where you're doing the things that top CEOs do. The average American reads only one book and they typically don't finish it. So by reading 52 books a year, one book a week, you end up 52 to one in the advantage department. So you can increase your likelihood of succeeding and beating the competition, the average person, by 52. Show fans if you like those odds. It gives you an unfair advantage. Awesome. So the book of the week is uh, something we do every single week that was built by me and Mike. We sat down, Michael Shine, our holistic attorney, our closer. Uh, he is somebody, he's also the keeper of the books. He's not here with us today. He's out in Rotan with his family on vacation. So uh, Mitch Dorsey, the scaredy cat guide to real estate investing, will be uh, giving us the book of the week. These books were very carefully, methodically chosen five years ago. And over the years, we've adjusted as a principle or as a book was written that really emphasized that principle significantly better. But for the most part, they've stayed about the same. And this book uh, this week is one that stayed with us for all five years. So Mitch Jorsky, without further ado, let's give him a big round of applause. The book of the week. Outliers. One of many good books by Malcolm Gladwell. He's written some good ones. And I call him the king of the airport lounge and airport shops. All his books are at the airports. And like, you know, on that case, it's kind of like separate. I don't know how I pulled it off, but there you go. That fits right into one of the uh, principles and rules of today. Set yourself apart. Find your niche. Um, Outliers is a cool book because uh, he basically studied success for the most part, but like, you know, what caused it. And it was cool because it was a combination of some uh, interesting accidents, so to speak. Uh, in terms of, uh, he talks about like a national hockey team, like a youth national hockey team, and how um, 9% of the team was born basically in the first three months of the year. And talked about like why that made a difference, how it made a difference. And simply that when you're like, let's say 14 years old and you were born in January, you have a good amount of growth compared to someone that was born in December, which is almost a full year later. And it was kind of like baffling. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Um and those are things that are less in your control, or maybe they're not. Because, I mean, I saw with uh, youth basketball, you know, parents like doing things where like they would try and get their kid almost like held back. So if they were a December baby, they would be in like the year where they'd be the oldest. So they'd have that advantage. Um, but anyway, the 10,000 hour rule um, got really popular from this book, Outliers. Um, and I think most people know the 10,000 hour rule. It's like, you know, if you want to master something, you got to put in 10,000 hours. Um, it has been a hot minute since I read this book. So, my details are probably a little off, but the general idea uh, on the stories will be still uh, in the ballpark. And one of the things I remember was uh, a story about the Beatles and, you know, considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest rock band in history. And when the Beatles were coming up, they were playing essentially some club um, where they were playing it's some stupid, I don't want to say seven days a week, but at least five days a week. They were playing like every single night. So over the course of a year, they basically put 10,000 hours in jamming out right and i think we could all agree that for the most part the beatles pretty much you know masters of their uh musicianship so pretty cool book um there's so many other different stories in there uh, about essentially how to become an outlier and um each chapter essentially is one and as you can see the book has got some girth so You'll get something out of it. Uh, those are just some examples. Uh, I found the book super entertaining and intriguing as well as uh, educational. And that's why it's probably a bestseller because it hit both those things. It did what I call edutainment. So uh, yeah, check it out, give it a read and uh, you'll get some kind of gem from it. Let's give Mitch Jorsky a big round of applause. He's a scared to get guide to real estate investing. He runs our mentorship program when we run it. He doesn't like to do a lot of coaching, but when he does do coaching, it's very solid. 
and he's one of the speakers at this year's summit, uh, which is going to be the real estate investors, uh, yeah, real estate and business investors summit 2024. Uh, Darina's work on the website. That'll be up probably in another week or so. No, that'll be up in like a month, two months. We're, we're not rushing it, <laughs> but it will be up available uh, soon. The uh, call on Wednesday, that is a sales training call. So if you're looking to increase your conversion rate, if you're looking to get access to more investors, if you're uh, raising capital, if you are getting sellers to sell to you or you're working with clients and you just want them to work with you instead of somebody who you think is not as good as you, then you're going to want to learn sales because if you are the best at what you do and somehow people are not working with you, that means they're going to go with somebody who's not as good, then it's really important that you learn sales so you can do the best for the most. Show fans, we agree. You're the best at what you do and you need to learn sales. Excellent. And if you think you're already good at sales, that's how I know you're not great at sales. Because every salesperson on the planet is always sharpening their sales skills. We're always getting better, myself included. So I will be sharing skills and knowledge that came from my trainers who teach me sales and the things that have worked for me. That'll be on Wednesday. And the event is called Work With Investors. It's a series that will be released over the next few weeks. And we're going to start with some of the high-level sales trainings that have really worked for me to get people to give me not $5,000, not $10,000, but $100,000, $200,000. Show fans if those are good skills to learn, no matter what level you're at. Awesome. Excellent. So Darina dropped that link just now. That is a Zoom link. So when you register, uh, you'll that may not be the same link every week. Uh, we'll drop the link in the newsletter. So if you don't have access to the newsletter, uh, I think you can go to the website. Go to alchemization.com, get access to the newsletter if you're not already on it. Or hmm, I don't know how to get you there other than that. Yeah, go to alchemistation.com. We'll get you access to the newsletter. Uh, just fill in your information. You'll get it. Now, uh, that being said, we're going to go to Q&A because questions are the only way for us to know where you're at and to get you to the next level. Uh, we will be doing a, for the first time ever, by the way, we will be doing a breakout room right after this where you are going to network with the rest of the community on this call, the 65 of you. If you're scared of networking, if you're afraid of other people, Now's the time to jump off. Well, you can stick around for the Q&A. But, but if you want to grow your business, if you think that somebody in this room could have the money, could have the deal, could have the knowledge, could have the connections, could have the relationships, or you're just looking to have like-minded people in your pocket as friends that hold you accountable to keep your goals standard and going, then stick around and we'll do the networking together. And drop, Darina will drop the link for that in any second now. So let's open up to questions. Uh, first to ask a question wins. And I'm just going to go to Gary Aker to get the ball rolling. Gary. Bring a question, brother. What's a good real estate investing question? So I had, uh, I was, I was watching a video yesterday and the guy said this, he said, this is a great market for sub two. So if someone has a, a, um, a VA loan or a, um, uh, What's the other kind of loan that they get for like 3%, 5%? FHA. FHA, FHA. or USDA. If someone has a VA loan or an FHA loan, you can assume that loan if you qualify. And I know that assuming a loan and sub two is different. Would you please explain to us the difference between those two strategies? <laughs> I absolutely can. Uh, I don't know if... Ken Ingram knows the difference, but if he does, he's a mortgage lender. It probably makes more sense to come from a mortgage lender. Uh, Ken, do you know the difference of assumption and sub two? Of course. Yeah. There we go. So, subject two is where you're leaving the mortgage in someone else's name and you're simply making the payments for them. Um, assuming is similar to actually qualifying for a mortgage on your own. Uh, you, typically, uh, you're going to jump through lots of hoops on the assumption. You may pull it off. It's worth a try, but um, yeah, very different. One is qualifying. The other is not. Uh, and one affects your credit. One affects the seller's credit, right? Perfect explanation. Let's give Ken Ingram a round of applause. He's been in the mortgage industry for 30 years. So uh, with well, him as an investor, by the way, let's also celebrate one of his successes. He just locked down a hotel how many doors on that hotel? How many keys? 18. 18. 18 keys in what state? Tennessee. Tennessee. You live in what state? Florida. Florida. Let's give a big round of applause. Out of state investing in a class of real estate I've never invested in. 
But my mentor does, Vinny Chopra does buy hospitality. He's flipped hotels, bought a lot of hotels. Uh, and Ken is fortunately in the mastermind and he has access to Vinny Chopra's course through his uh, multifamily syndication academy. And he has also direct access to Vinny because that's kind of how much I like Ken. Uh, awesome. Let's get another question. <laughs> Great answer, by the way. Um, so I had a question. If you're writing a book, how many pages should it be? Oh, that's a good question. All right. So I ran a ghost writing company with Jen Sullivan for two years. And my suggestion to most people was start with a book that is at least a hundred pages. But we have somebody on this call who wrote a book even thinner than mine. And yes, size does matter, but not when it comes to books. So Mitch, what, what how many pages did your book have? I mean, I agree with you with the hundred pages thing, because my first, so the real estate book, is literally like, I think exactly a hundred pages. And I'm not going to lie. I think I stretched an extra page or two to hit a hundred um, with maybe like some acknowledgement, acknowledgements or whatever, which I wanted in there anyway. But then, uh, where is it? Then the crypto book, it was like, well, crypto is confusing to people. So why bloat it? So this thing is only 50 pages. It looks almost like a booklet. I'm afraid to call it a book. Um, and here's the problem with that. Go ahead, Mitch. Turn that book sideways. Oh, Show yeah. us your spine, bro. No spine. <laughs> it's got no spine. I mean, yeah, the spine was not thick enough to put my name and the book title on it. So the reason, at least for a technical reason, you want 100 pages is so you can get the name of your book and your name on the spine. Obviously, when you get to 150, then you have like a real spine where you can like, you know, put print that's actually, you know, not magnifying glass status. So 100 minimum if you want to have anything on your spine. Um, 150 if you want it to actually look like a solid book. Um, but again, doesn't mean you have to do it. Um, I can't. Yeah. Both these books are be best sellers on Amazon. This one did it faster and it's only 50 pages. So again, there's pros and cons to everything. You don't have to write a hundred page book, but at the end of the day, people want to hold something that feels like a book, right? This is hundred pages. That feels like a book. Book. Let me, uh, let me give you some visual examples. So there are in Thurman, I'll, I'll give it to you right after this. So this is a book that is not just about the pages. This is, uh, I want to say a 62 page book, but the size of the book, this is a much larger size when you compare it to another type of book. This is Alex Ramosi went for this direction. So size of book makes a big difference as well. And what you put inside of it can make a big difference. So this is uh, more of a workbook. So names on deeds is the ultimate guide to small multifamily real estate investing for beginners. This positioned me in a space that I love. I'm very, very good at it. And I use this as a way to help investors level up their game. So this book doesn't have much of a spine, it's got surface, so people can't slide it into their book trays like they normally would. It ends up being on a desk and taking up a lot of real estate. The other type of book, this is the strong suggestion for those of you who are writing your first book, is somewhere around 140, 150 pages. Uh, broke to a quarter million is 144. I could have easily gone to the 50 had I left a glossary or a index at the back, which when I go and edit this book this year, I'm going to do a revised version of it probably towards the end of the year, this book will be closer to 180 pages. Let's give Scott uh, Knaus a round of applause. Anybody who's holding the book up right now, give yourselves a big round of applause if you got the book next to you. <laughs> Love you. Appreciate it. So this is a, a book suggestion for most people with uh, an average amount of knowledge. And then this size book, this is a 300-page book. This is for those who really want to leave a difference and really want your spine to say something. This is the book I wrote so that I could outsource my acquisitions company. So I never had to look for deals again. And anytime somebody comes out of my acquisitions team, this is the book I give them. This is my manual for how we find off market properties. So I wrote this book as a way to say, I never want to teach this again. Here, read this book. When you can spit it back to me, how I do what I do, you're hired. You can join my acquisitions team. So if you understand the different types of books, this one took six months to write. This is a lot of work in this book. Uh, this one was three months, significantly easier. And this one was written by a virtual assistant after I taught a two-day training course on the system. I wrote this book with Michael Shine, with uh, Mitch Jorsky, with Mitch Durfee, with um, a couple of other leaders, uh, Terry Wager, and 
Uh, we wrote this book also with Ryan McGovern, um, Ryan McDermott. So this book was a collaboration and you could see each one of them taught different lessons. And I had a virtual assistant put this together. So it took me two hours, uh, two days with my team to teach the seminar. And then a virtual assistant went in and, and turned this all into an actual workshop uh, workbook. So some things, some of you are more equipped to do that a little bit faster. And then you got this one. So if you don't have a lot of skill and you just want to get like information, you got a little booklet. You can, you can make a Mitch Dorsky booklet like Grant Cardone did. Uh, he says he put this 40 page booklet together in an hour. So uh, you can position yourself with this as well. And this is a great way to give a client, hey, here's the basics of how you work with me. Here's the basics of how I build millionaires. Here's the basics of how I get uh, the job done. So if you're a lender and you put a book together like this, this booklet could be considered extreme value to your clients. That's a long way to answer that question, but did that help? Yeah. Herbert, go ahead. Give Look, us some more. I was also Thank gonna you. comment that like with books, there are no rules like to this. Like it, it all depends on the purpose of the book as well as like um like for instance, like if you're writing a poetry book, it doesn't have to be a hundred pages. Like, you know, those can be short, 50 pages, 40 pages, 30 pages, maybe more. Or if you're like doing something like uh, I know Stephen Beaver, his book is also like booklet size, like, you know, the millionaire booklet. So it all just depends on like, what's your goal behind the book is what I would ask you before you even think about, you know, how many pages and all that. Let me just make fun of all these small little booklets, though. I mean, if you really want to be a thought uh, leader, you, you write a real size book and you put some really good information in it. And you promote the hell out of it. And you tour the country going on all of our stages teaching what you taught. So I'll put it out to you. We have 30 stages at the moment across the country that meet every single month. And we are looking for speakers who are talented and heart-centered and want to grow this community with us and really level up and build millionaires. So if you write a great book, let us know. And if you want to get on our stages, if you're very good at what you do, very, very good at what you do, and it can add value to millionaires and help people, especially the baby boom generation as they're transferring $71 trillion of net worth to their next generations. If there's something that you have written or are very good at, then send an email to events at alchemistation.com and we may be able to get you on a solid tour, being able to go across the country. Show fans that'd be valuable to somebody who's really good as an author. Awesome. So yeah, just put the challenge out there. And also, if you want me to speak at one of your events, get 100 people in the room. I'll put the challenge out to every one of our leaders in this community. I love speaking. I can't wait to come uh, and hang out with you guys. Put 100 people in the room and I will come out there. Darina has said, which, what events are you flying to? I will fly to something with 100 people in the room. But if you're having 30, 40, 50 right now, just keep going. You're doing wonderful. Keep helping. Keep building millionaires. And we could send other investors who are locally to come and speak in your stages as well. Uh, Darina, breakout rooms. Uh, let's take one more question. One more question before we jump. Show fans if you're having fun with the questions. You get a lot of value out of these. Awesome. One more question before we jump. And I know Roland Charles wrote a book, so he probably unmuted his mic to tell us about his book and his experience. Is that accurate, Roland? Oh, you're sorry, man. Your sound's not working. We can't hear you. Question, Darina, bring us a question. What do you got? Okay, well, I have a question that it's burning. So at the beginning of the call, I said I'm talking to like now it's over 30 lenders and they all sound wonderful and have different uh, terms, conditions, rates, time frames. How would I identify a real expert in what they do? Because sometimes, you know, the art of sale is really understanding what I'm looking for versus, you know, some lenders actually didn't say nice things about others. That's like a no-no for me. And like, how would I choose even if I have the exact same offer between like five lenders how would I go about choosing the right expert what am I looking for that's a great question show fans if this is something you'd like to learn as well as real estate investors uh, the simple answer genuinely Dorina you're telling me that all the offers are exactly the same they're they're giving you well, the same rates taken from 40 five will be about what I'm looking for right so now how do I choose? 
because that you know it's a long, long process for underwriting like it will pull your credit or so i want to pick the right one awesome if everybody is created equal have you gotten references from other people who've used them before most of them are referrals Okay. So they're all referrals. Oh. They're coming from people that you know, like, and trust. Actually. So the next thing I look at when I'm pulling a lender, you're now getting into a very superficial space when you have this many options. I'm choosing a lender who's got an audience. I'm choosing a lender who's going to get me access to more deals or more properties or more capital. I'm choosing a lender who could get me in front of more people for my business. Somebody maybe I could uh, partner up with on the influence side of things. Uh, if all lenders are created equal, I'm looking for expanding my business in other areas that I'm no longer looking at just the loan. I'm looking at a longer term relationship. Uh, do they do all their deals morally, ethically, legally? Do they have a, a solid, committed family unit? Like I'm, I'm looking now at the details because it's like, if I'm going to build a relationship with you, you're going to be my lender. We're going to be in, you know, in business together for years. So I'm looking at the, the long term. Can they speak, right? Can they speak? Can they create content? If they can speak and create good content, then maybe I can do something bigger with them down the road and bring them to one of my stages. Uh, are they are they really good at, uh, remember, we're about building millionaires. So for me, what I do might be a little bit different from another investor. But for an average investor, are they well networked with other investors in my network? I'm, I will choose a lender who's local over a lender who's from another state because there's a better chance they can connect me with potential other deals that are where I'm investing. So those are those are little things that I look for at that that higher deeper level. I answer that question. Yeah, I didn't even think about it actually, but yes, thank you. <laughs> we do the same thing with syndication. Like when we're investing our money with people's deals, like well, who's in our mastermind? If they're not in our mastermind, I prioritize mastermind, right? If uh, if I'm the only way I'll invest outside of our mastermind is this person has a massive audience. I'm looking to get into. Because like Rod Cleef or uh, Tim Bratz, like these guys with big audiences, I might invest with them to get access to, you know, their audience or, you know, their masterminds relationships. Go ahead, Scott. If all things are created equal, I'm looking at, you know, what other components in my life goals can they help me achieve just by building that relationship? Uh, Scott Knaus, go ahead, brother. All right. The... And that I think of that last answer kind of helped help me a lot, but um, just starting out, if you were, you know, to, what kind of uh, deal should the for a starter, a beginner, what kind of business or what kind of property should they be looking at as a as a first investment, something to get them started, to get the get the wheels turning? I have. I know people that have money to invest, but uh, want getting them to see me as where I'm making money to be able to want to partner up with me. I want to know what the best property to start out. That's a great question. Show fans if you have ever had that question as well. Awesome. Excellent. I, I will answer that. Although there's other people on this call who are very qualified. I know Gary could answer it. Mitch could answer it. Doug could answer it. Uh, Ron could answer it. Uh, but I will I'll give you, and I know Patrick could answer it. Cliff could answer it. Uh, quite a few people. Ken can answer it. <laughs> Ken, you, do you want this one? Oh, I got it. All right. So here's, here's the answer that I've given many people in the past when they've asked me this, Scott. Whatever deal you will do, whatever deal you confidently feel you can close today is the deal to start doing. And I've asked this from billionaires. I've asked Vinny Chopra, what what deal you know should I tell people to start with? And Vinny's very clear. He said, look, I started with single families. I started with a duplex. You know, I, he said, I, he just said this is Thursday. He said, I still have the duplex I started with. And it brings me in a lot of money now, but I bought it for dirt cheap then. And even then it made a lot of money and it made a lot of sense to me. So you do the deal that you will do. Now, the deal you do next year could be bigger. The deal you do next year should be bigger. They should be bigger and bigger and progressively get to larger and larger deals. Right now we're looking at... Um, in the last six months, we've bought 35 units. But in the last seven, like a month from now, we'll have another 64 units that are closed. So that's now 99 units that we bought in seven, a seven or eight month period by the time we close. That only that level of being able to just close on these things that quickly only happened over, I've been investing for 14 years. So <laughs> no, not 14. Oh my God. I'm, it's getting 16 years now, 16 years I've been investing. So that 
progression of being able to just close on these deals. And I've never flown out to this state and I probably never will go to Illinois. I can't see a reason to go out there unless we build an Alchemist Nation team that's got 100 people showing up to their events. So uh, start with where you will. Show fan if that makes sense. Whatever you will do will give you the confidence to do the next deal. Whatever your first deal is, is going to be your worst deal. You need to get behind you. I don't care if you do a, a trailer park. I don't care if you just do a mobile home. I don't care if you do a dog house and you rent the dog house out. The idea is you just got to follow the full process. Renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. If you can go and rent something out, buy something, rent it out, and, and get paid for it, you start real estate investing, get to the next one. I know Gary has an in-law apartment in one of his, uh, his house, and then he has an in-law apartment out in the back. You know, basically like a, a garage or a shed that he's now converted over and turned into a unit. That is a great place to invest. I have an investor out in California, in San Diego. I can't remember where uh, they were from, but I think they're in San Diego, San Francisco, and they built a unit in the back of their house. And that was their first investment, their first investment. Um, do you, know, you remember which couple I'm talking about? Uh, Manny and Raj. Manny and Raj. That's right. Okay. That, that was their name. Perfect. Manny and Raj, right? They had a, a half a million dollar house and they just, they converted like the backyard, they converted the backyard into a unit. And I think that they cost, the unit cost them 180,000 or 140,000. And uh, now that unit's worth 300,000, right? California prices, right? Sticker shock, you know, backyard shed just suddenly went up in value, getting $3,000 a month out of it. So there's, uh, whatever you will do is the place to start. And I'm not saying, by the way, new construction and starting, that can be very complicated, right? My first deal was just a single family home. My second deal was a three family. It was just, this is what I was comfortable with, what I knew I could close on. Uh, uh, we have a 1130 meeting with Greg, if you're still taking, <laughs> yeah, we're going to different breakout rooms. All right. So who's here? Who is ready to network? Is some networking? All right, Dorena. Okay, Dorena just dropped the link. So what you're going to do is uh, click that link jump into it grab the link very quickly because we are about to log off from here we're going to jump into that other room if you want to network with everybody on this call click the link in the chat if you're on facebook i apologize you should have gotten our newsletter and our newsletter has the link to jump into this call and then this link you can only get it from being on the 52 weeks to wealth so definitely go to alchemistnation.com register for the event so that you can be here next week uh Darina, can you jump into the other room to make sure that everybody's okay over there. And then everybody who is here, click on the Zoom link that Darina just dropped in the chat. That is the link we are all moving over to. We're about to go network for each of you who is still online on Facebook. Go and spend some time with a loved one this weekend. Position yourself as the greatest person on the planet. This mission is something that goes through the entire week. This principle is something that goes through the entire week. Um, and continue to work on it all throughout the year. Become a thought leader. Position yourself as a world-class expert in your business. Lots and lots of money and success. We're wishing to you. Uh, next week's principle is principle number 20. Apply the 10X rule to your planning. And then this Wednesday, we'll be teaching work with investors and sales training. Uh, for everybody on the call, let's grab that link and jump over. Thumbs up if you've got the link. Awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause. Love you guys. Let's go. I'll see you on the other side. Uh, for everybody on Facebook, cheers to your success. You have a choice. Always work with the best. We'll see you next week for Wealth Principle 20.